Hello and welcome back to Simon. Hee <laughs> hee! I was wondering if you forgot that. Now, before we launch into the news, Simon and I went out this week. Um, Simon, for my birthday, as a birthday present. Happy birthday, Lewis. He got this either a while ago now or it's yet to come. I don't know when this is it's going out. It's yet to come for us, but it will be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Not two weeks ago when this goes out. I anyway, don't know. Simon, for the first time ever in the history of our relationship, um, sent me a, a text saying, "Come to this location at this time." Okay, and chased it up as well. Every day he was like, "You are coming, right?" This is, this is a secret, but we're going out. So it was like Sunday evening. It was yes. I had to meet you at six thirty, and you were like, "You're gonna be there. You're definitely gonna be there." So, but he wouldn't tell me what it was. So I didn't know what was happening, what was going on at all. It was this mystery thing. It was so annoying. So I was the only person who would possibly do this. He refused to tell me. He just said, you have to be there. So I turned up. And um, it was at a the theatre. Ooh. And it was an evening with Brian Blessed. An evening with Brian Blessed. Now, yes. old school podcast listeners will know that I don't really know the context of why he's a, he's a remarkable man. He's a very he interesting is. character. Big beard, very loud. Yeah. That is that why you like him because those <clears> two <throat> do you feel familiar with him? Like do if, you... it feels like he's the father I never had. Oh wait, no, I do have a dad, Alan. Sorry. Yeah, well my <clears> dad's <throat> Alan as well. Yeah, we've been Different. through this. Why'd you say that name? <laughs> Martha. It's the same. <laughs> So they, as Simon said, when they made Brian Blessed, they broke the mold. He's 86. He's from a different time. Um, he's a fascinating man who's had an extraordinary life. When Lewis says from a different time, he means he was slightly sexist and racist. Occasionally, a just little, a little bit. bit. Just, over, just, just a little tiny bit. But in a, but fun, in a good way. I mean, his, <clears throat> his stories are... Obviously, a man who's climbed Everest multiple times without oxygen. He's walked to the north. He's the oldest man to walk to the North Pole. The magnetic North Pole. Magnetic North. Don't know what the difference is, but it is important. <clears throat> um, and he's also got in a plane crash in Venezuela. He's also, it's also yeah. been in everything. He's been in Star Wars. He was Boss Nass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's got these incredible anecdotes, which I don't want to tell because I feel like they're his. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're in his book and stuff, I'm sure, as well. But It was so weird. It was a wild... It was a, The first half was very lighthearted. Well, it was all for charity, right? So he's, yeah. he's done these sort of eat like talks. <clears throat> it's not really like a set or anything. It's kind of just very ad-lib. It's like he just sits there. Like, like us doing this now, just talks in circles and... It was all over the place. He was like bouncing from the future to the past. Yeah. Because he, he kept going on about space. He was, he's obsessed with. He thinks aliens are real. He thinks aliens are real. Like, that was a moment where, because we were right in the front row in <laughs> front of him, right? He was mo mostly <laughs> making eye contact with the girl on my right. Right. Not me, thankfully. But I was there and he was, he was talking about, of course, the James Webb telescope was getting messages from aliens. <laughs> And the look on my face must have been just like... I, I think you turned to me at one point and were like... And I was like, it's okay. But man, he, so, I mean, he's got stories about running naked through the streets of Bristol at 3am with Peter O'Toole. Like crazy stories. Yeah. So Brian, he, well, at one point during the show, he took his glasses off to clean them. He, <laughs> he snapped... He, he snapped the leg off. <laughs> and he's he like, fell on the oh. floor. And then he had to, he had to do like a very sort of slow split because uh, he's uh, an old man. So he had to sort of do this to reach down to his <laughs> broken glasses. Anyway, I had a lovely time. It's the first time me and you have done anything, and it was it's it's a very yeah we've never done anything before. A, <laughs> well, in years, in like years and years, isn't it? And in the same week, we got invited to the flipping Jaffa factory. Well, we won a competition. The Jaffa Factory. I'm saying it like that, but we won a competition. We went to a very small Krispy Kreme in Cabot Circus, And Circus saw how Bristol. Jaffas were made. Krispy Kreme did a competition for Jaffa Cake Donuts on TikTok. Sarah entered it, and you did. Came up with the whole thing. Yeah. We record, spent a whole afternoon. Instead of a pee-pee, they spent the day doing stupid TikTok stuff. It was worth it, though. 
It was worth it because we won, but also so we, we were cash prize, the only entrant. A cash prize, and we got a card that's got money on. So we're spending. Christmas we're donating cream. the cash prize to charity, and the I don't know why, but we are. And then also we well, got a year's. Wait, no, wait, no, wait a minute. We got a no, year's. No, 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 it's already been done. Where no, wait. I won. I won. You didn't win. I I won. We Simon won. Lane Se I won. had to go to the stupid Char Krispy Kreme. Oh, right. Is it going to the, the Simon Lane Foundation for sick kids and stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is it, what is it just spent on Lego mm. um, for the kids? Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the kids. So, no. They need that Lego uh, lighthouse with the motor in. Anyway. Yeah. It was nice to do these old school Yogs things, you know? People we meet it was a delight. In, always remember us for the old days. Do you remember the guy who wanted the photo? Do you remember that? Alex is laughing at it already. So was it you holding them? Or was so it Sarah? You guys wanted us to do an intro to this thing outside. So we're all we're stood outside Krispy Kreme's holding these all these Jaffa donuts. And a fan comes up. Or what we thought was a fan. I was yeah. like, can I have a photo with you? And we, no, we were, asked, can I have a photo? Can I have a photo? And we were like, sure. And he was like, can I hold the donuts? So we were like, sure. So we gave him the donuts. And then he was like, he backed away with them a bit. Yeah. And was like. So he didn't want a picture with us and him holding the donuts. He just wanted us to take a picture of him holding all of these donuts. Well, the, the, the questions were like, it was like, so do you want. So, do, have you got a camera? And he's like, no, no, just use yours. <laughs> we don't, we don't even know who he is. And then they're like, do you want to, do you want them, do you want them to, do you want them to be in it? No, just take a picture of me and these donuts. So we took a picture of him. So we got this photo. Maybe he's watching. And he, I was like, do you want the photo? And he's like, oh, it'll be on the Krispy Kreme account, will it? And I was like, no. <laughs> and then he left. <laughs> anyway, that's a. I thought it might be worth just, just sharing that with everyone. Yeah. Little Lewis and a little Simon. Catch up little with Simon people. Lewis update. Yeah. So I'm trying to get the nick. Because it is thing pecu out of my peculiar news from us. It was peculiar to see Brian Blessed talk about He's this probably not weird, gonna be around weird for much stuff. longer as well. This could have been the last chance to see him. He is a weirdy, weirdy guy. A good in a good way. We should do like a live pee pee there in that studio. How do you feel about that? Well, with like the Jamaican cafe backdrop. Thing. Yeah, it had a weird Jamaican <laughs> cafe backdrop. No, but they were like, sorry, sorry weird? about this. Which just, Wasn't that weird? It's like a leftover set. <laughs> well, it's only Brian on a chair. I mean, it's not like they need it. goat and plantain <laughs> yeah, to sit on like, the board. We could use the same one. Oh, I don't yeah. think it'll be there. Well, we bring the bring this up. The piss easy. Yeah. I think it'd be nice to do one of these in front of a live audience, Alex. Well, I mean, we've got Alex. What's wrong? Sorry? Are you just worried how Sorry, much... Sorry, was I making to... a face? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> start at the beginning. Do you... Okay. I'm easy. Start... I can take. I can have anything today. Start at the beginning. Okay. I'm flexible. You, so... I know you have great taste, so, Ooh, you know, I'll, I'll let be, you decide. I'd be so sure of that. So have you... Oh, you heard about this? You heard about this? You heard about this? Is that like Jerry Seinfeld? Something? No, it's, it's Jay Leno. Oh, yeah. I think. Sure. Um, it was someone. So uh, a whole bunch of rabbits are going to be destroyed. Don't worry, they're not real rabbits; they're chocolate ones. Okay, thank goodness. Uh, oh, I was relieved. So Lidl has done their own knockoff of the lint, uh, the golden foil wrapped choco bunny. Choco bunny with a little bell around its neck. Now this is we've seen this egregiously with supermarkets ripping off. Calling the caterpillar. Oh, um, don't even start. Do you know what I mean? And like all the other ones. Yeah. Right? This is just the latest. What was the knockoff caterpillar called? It Drake? was like Karen. There was literally what, what was there it? was literally every supermarket had one. And they were all different. Oh my god, is that all of them? <laughs> How many different ones there I are? I know, everyone has one. Marks and Spencer, so they did the original Colin. Then there's Aldi, Asda, Waitrose, Sainsbury, Tesco, and the co-op. That all do cakes that are caterpillars. Yeah, it's like wiggles. Wiggles! <laughs> do you see what I mean? They're all called stupid stuff. Okay, so that's the original Colin. Wiggles is Sainsbury's. Uh, Clyde. Clyde from Asda. 
Morris from Morrison's. Oh, come it's on. It's got man. little grommet eyes, that Curly one. Curly from Tesco. That one looks real shit. That <laughs> looks fucking Well, I mean, they all shit. look a bit like a shit. That looks dog. Because they're... Cecil from Waitrose. Ce Cecil. Charlie from the co-op. I cannot believe that. I cannot believe I think, are that. They, did they all get away with it? I think they were all allowed. I think they did. But the difference is that Lint... Um, had like a, a a patent or copyright or whatever the hell on having like a chocolate foil wrapped, sorry, a golden foil wrapped chocolate bunny. Right. Like they own that. So if anyone else copies them, they take them to court. So the, so the, the chocolate bunny is protected by some sort of court. The premium chocolate maker Lint and Sprungli. Mm-hmm. Um, they went to the highest court of the land in Switzerland. Probably on the top of one of those mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. For fuck's sake. Uh, German. Germany, yeah. Lint is... Oh, not Lint. Lidl is German. They must stop selling all the rabbit... Ver they've met the knockoff mm. rabbits and destroy any remaining stock. Yeah. So this was... This was... Overturning a previous ruling made last year by a court which found against Lint instead. Yeah. Wow. So that was a commercial court, and this is a federal court, which is above. All right. The chocolate maker submitted surveys as part of its case showing that the gold bunny was exceptionally well known to the public, adding that the Lint and Little Rabbits were too likely to be confused, even though there were some differences between them. This feels very similar to the cock, the cock, the cock, cock pillar. Colin the cock pillar. Excuse me? <laughs> the cat of Colin. Cock pillar? Yes, you know what I meant. I mean, when if someone was to present me with a gold foil wrapped bunny with a little bow around its neck, I'd, I would know that was a lint bunny, right? Because right, right, that's right. their thing. They had a whole bunch of adverts with like a master chocolatier and he's like, Oh yes, maybe my lovely chocolate. And then they, you know, they tie the little ribbon around with the bell, and it's like a whole big deal. So it's very much, you know, their thing. Okay, no. So fair the enough. audacity of Lidl to think that they could get away with this in the year two thousand, Lint uh, had a trademark on the three-dimensional shape of its bunny. Yeah. So no one else can do that exact shape of chocolate bunny. Yeah, well, no, good, good job, good job putting that down. They obviously, you know, <clears throat> fine. I'm on the side of lint. All of a sudden, I'm on the side of law, and uh, good on them. What's going to happen to all the bunnies? Are they going to melt them down? <laughs> melt them down. <laughs> what do they do with them? Uh, I guess they just set them free. You know. <clears throat> no, but you know what rabbits are like. Shop. Yeah, delicious. Chocolate, <laughs> chocolate rabbits. So this is this is really, really fucking weird. Mm -hmm. And even just hearing the description of it, you're going to be like, "What?" And it's only until we actually play the audio that you'll be okay, blown away by it. But there's an issue with American Airlines flights where over the speakers, where you'd normally hear like the captain or cabin crew talk to you, make an address. Badly, yeah. Noisily. It's quality. You're about to land in Tenerife. The temperature's 29 degrees Celsius. It's yeah. going to be a pleasant afternoon. I uh, hope you had a good flight. Uh, yeah, get shit face for me, will you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Kind of, you well, know, please they, take all your litter and you know, all that crap. Yeah. I make that kind of thing. But f instead of a message like that, there's... Noises that have been described as explosive diarrhea, the sound of someone vomiting, and a weird, vaguely sexual moan, all coming out of the speakers. So there's hundreds of people on these planes just hearing these noises come out of every single speaker. It's haunted. So they're quite... What does explosive di diarrhea sound like? A kind of gunfire slapping? What is like... What is the sound of that? It's, um, okay, just imagine you've got a, a bucket filled with, um, eggs. 
<laughs> okay. The eggs have been cracked. They're all loose, right. slopping around. And then he empty that bucket into a, a full bath of water. <laughs> That's a bit like the sound of diarrhea. I know, but explosive. The wet slapping. It's like high, higher speed, though. <clears throat> yeah. I don't like the idea of the word explosive being used anywhere near a plane. But explosive diarrhea, you might think, maybe it's just like white noise or static. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Right, right, So maybe right. that's nothing. Okay, nothing. Vomiting, like, uh, uh, you know, maybe that's like an, a stutter or it's like, uh, 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 static kind of noise. Right, 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 right. The no. vaguely sexual moan, uh, 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 you know, maybe that's, I don't know, a loose wire or something. So maybe it's just like weird staticky white noise things. I right? Shall we actually listen to the fucking thing? Sure, 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 it's sure. insane. Sure. Okay, let's see if this actually works. Someone on this flight seems to have broken into the intercom system and continues to make a sound that is somewhere between an orgasm and vomiting. None of us are enjoying it. it now i don't think that's just like white noise and static no it's a guy going oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like it's i think it's more of a grunty kind of just a such a weird noise how are they doing it though someone has tapped in how somehow to the intercom how have they hacked into it they're coming through loud and clear yeah as well everyone on that flight heard it that is un Believably funny. Um, they're not. They're not that like. It's not really diarrhea or anything like this. It's more just kind of like. Don't even making farty noises and stuff. It's kind of just a guy doing noises with his face. The PA systems on board our aircraft are hardwired, and there's no external access. Right. So it's, there's no way that you could just like hack it. Following the initial report, our maintenance team <clears throat> thoroughly inspected the aircraft and the PA system and determined the sounds were caused by a mechanical issue with the PA amplifier. Bullshit. I don't think Bullshit. so. Bullshit. I don't, I don't think it's like tapping in. Ah, noises. But it was like, yeah. it was clearly a prank, but it can't have been someone like in the toilet or anything like this, right? It's got to have been... Someone's just got. They don't want to say, oh, anyone with internet access can, you know, broadcast to our speakers well, on first board of all, a plane. Okay, first of all, because you could just say anything. No, but hello, this is your captain speaking. Unfortunately, we're about to crash land. <laughs> Sorry, kiss your asses goodbye. 
you know, it could be anything. Okay, first of all, this, this plane has been hijacked. I'm sorry to say, these planes are quite old. They'll right? be killing passengers every five minutes. <laughs> like the chaos you could cause. No one's look. So someone making fart noises. That's fine, right? No one's going to be doing that's that. Fine. Look, that's a way to get yourself shot by the sky marshal. What I'm saying is, there's pr there probably is a couple of those little speakers that they use that are on the little phones that right. are tapped in. There, there might just be one that was next to a guy's seat and he was just picking up and oh, using what's this? it. Uh, uh, <laughs> just like... I think so. I think that's what genuinely what was happening. He was just doing it and really then, like, subtly. And then a steward walks by and he's just like <laughs> I genuinely That's so weird. What was that? I had that too. Oh. <laughs> that is exactly what I think it was. And they're just making excuses. I reckon they didn't hear what we heard. They were like, the maintenance team were, were called in to investigate this, but they didn't have any, or that, like they didn't have that recording to go off. Yeah. You know? So, oh, it's, yeah, it's probably just white noise or yeah, you know, static just... and stuff. Yeah. Just or wire. maybe they were in on it. Oh, shit. See, that's the other thing. It could be an insider. It could be one of the cabin crew. Doing it as a like a as like a prank. What well, like a bet? Watches the watchman. You know what I mean? It yeah. might even be the captain or the co-pilot doing it for a laugh. The captain's like, oh, I'm fucking bored of this fight. I'm fucking bored. It's livening things up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, sorry, I don't know where that came from. We're really annoyed about this noise. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, this, a stewardess walks in. What's happening? I've no idea. Can you sort it out? Oh, come on, this is terrible. People are paid to be on this flight. This is really bad. And then as soon as she leaves, ooh! <laughs> <laughs> this is so. I love this story. This is great. Because whatever the answer is, it's still funny. I'm trying to think of one of the worst things that you could say on the flight. I'm still thinking. And I, I, I thought of something pretty good, right? Oh, God. Do it in the captain's... <clears throat> Hello there. This is an announcement for the passengers of this flight, um, 69.420 to Malaga. <laughs> um, free flights for lifetime to the first person to make it to the captain's cabin. <laughs> Anyone who makes it to the cockpit, the first person who makes it there <laughs> will get free flights for life. Wow. That it's a, a stampede of people all rushing to the front of the plane. The plane will probably tip over, <laughs> start going down <laughs> to the ground. That works. Yeah, I think so. Okay, like a seesaw. Yeah, I don't think they can get into the cockpit though, can they? The door for free flights, they'll find right, a way. I see. Actually, that's true. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. People will do anything for free stuff. I think maybe that's like a solution to like. Some of the world's problems, you know? You know, we need to figure out how to like deal with climate change. Maybe we just need to like figure out if we just make, you know, say we're gonna do something for free, and then people will be just crazily obsessed with we it. We need to do like a like a given well not we, but as a society. Simon Clark, maybe. Yeah. Dr. Simon Clark. No, maybe not him. Maybe not. Let's not put this on Let's him. Let's not put anyone on it. Yeah. The British government, yeah. they need to do a, uh, like a Daily Mail kind of prize. Win a cottage in the countryside and a million pounds cash a year for life if you can solve the climate crisis. Yeah. Bam. Countryside cottage. It'll be done by next cottage. week, you know? Because people always make it into a, like, a game, you know, where people can like, mm. try and break it, like Spiff style. Squid game, but with climate scientists. Right, different And we kill them all angle. off until one is left, and that will solve... Yeah, because then no one will be complaining about it anymore. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> so a terrible that, idea. That probably would that's work. That's a terrible idea. That's an engineer's solution. <clears throat> this is big news. Big news, Lewis. <clears throat> big news. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Um, someone has broken the Guinness World Record for... Uh, Skipping, uh, yeah, aka jumping rope, mm -hmm. um, whilst in a sitting position, right? That can't be very comfortable. It doesn't look comfortable. It doesn't look comfortable. What is the what's the record? This was in Bangladesh. Razal Islam 
who <sighs> previously earned Guinness World Records for most double under skips in three minutes and most skips in one minute on one leg, popped over a rope while sitting on the ground to break the record for most bum skips. Bum skips. Yeah. In 30 seconds. He did 117 bum skips in 30 seconds. Good grief. That, wow. That's like four a second. How, how the hell, what? That what? does seem <laughs> fast. <laughs> That's, okay. Sorry, so he had to <clears throat> bum up, up and down. He had to bum up and down, yes. 117 times. In 30 seconds, yeah. So there is a video. So he's this. jumping up and down four times per second. Yeah. And spinning the rope round his whole body from a sitting position. If, so, you, if you're listening to the audio version, you're going to have to just imagine what this looks like. Uh, but Just the, use your imagination. You, sure, you can. The video, I guess we can describe how it looks. We'll watch it and then sure. Lewis can describe what this looks like. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what we're watching is. Um, we're watching a man, he's not spinning the rope round his legs, he's got the rope in one hand, he's spinning it just under his ass in a circle, Yeah. so it's always touching the ground, and he's just bouncing his butt up his and butt, down, a very squashy sort of butt. Four times a second. Four times per second, bouncing <laughs> up and down. In he looks like of, he's in pain. He looks like he's in a great deal of pain. Yeah. He's kind of like doing a, one of those sit-up things, you know? It's obviously very painful for When the... it ends, he's like, ah! But he's also delighted about how well it's done. Yeah. Um, so he knows that he's broken the record. The other two guys are looking very bored. They're just watching on in the I background. I don't know what is going on with those two. Are they like his bodyguards? He looks like he's doing some sort of weird, like, slug manoeuvre. It's, it's weird. I don't know how to describe it, because he's sort of... He doesn't stay in a straight one place. He sort so of turns. Because he, he slowly rotates as he does the jumps. He just like loses control, I think, a bit. Or he's bored. It can't be get that. This is how you get hemorrhoids, right? I think so. I mean, imagine if you do it wrong, you're just going to catch yourself right in the... In the bollocks. He probably has like a box. Or something. It doesn't look easy. I don't reckon I could do like any bum skip. Fuck. I don't reckon I could do a single Can bum skip. You do one. I don't think so. <clears throat> well, Lewis, we've got the skipping rope here today. <laughs> that is. Uh, Why is this a world record? Well, that, I mean, that's always my question, isn't it, on these things? I think world records are quite addictive. You know, once you've got one, you want to get more of them. The you fact know? that they use the hashtag bum skips. You could probably just Google bum skips and find anyone. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's, let's Google bum skips. If you really want to watch some bum skips action. Bum skips. Is this someone else doing it? <laughs> this guy's doing bum skips. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, my God. There's so much happening all at once. I can't. What? <laughs> India. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. International world record. So this must be this some... Is a, this isn't Guinness. This is some bullshit thing. This is an alternative book of records. The Look. International Book of Records. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Who? What? It's probably like a more authentic and non-biased version, though, that's less meme-heavy. So he's going kind of, to be in a yogic position, a lotus kind of position, right? Which is known as the... Padmasana, apparently. I assume so. Yeah. Can we How many get to reckon... the fucking skip? There it is. Okay, here we go. The world record of most. Oh fucking hell! He's uh, he's not as quick. He's not as quick. He's not as quick as he hasn't got like a good technique. Down. Doing like two a second. Oh, and he oh, sat on it one. He's not doing great. I reckon you could beat this, Lewis. <laughs> 44. That's all you got to beat. 44. In oh, he, re he really seconds. messed it up at the end there. Look at this. He's just... He's fucking terrible. Is this his best attempt? Or did he just try it once? See, it looks like he just tried it once. Salute the talent. It's not a sport I've ever heard of. Well, it's not a now. sport, is it? And I feel like... I feel like I shouldn't be seeing a Guinness World <clears throat> Record for something that I only just found out existed. 
<laughs> that second. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I feel like the, wor- the world record should be like a sort of catalog of human achievement, right? Of what the human body is capable of doing. Oh, I don't, I, right? Do you know what? I prefer it when it's more factual, like biggest fish, tallest mountain. No, but imagine like you know, humanity got wiped out. Okay, not man... How many tomatoes can a man eat in two minutes? But I know, no, this is what I'm saying. But imagine an, an aliens took over, and they were like, "Oh, we want to, we want to see what the human race was capable of," you know? Yeah. And the best specimens of humanity were able to, I don't know, run this far in this speed, like, like. Yeah, that's a film called The Human Race. Sure, right? You rec- you can imagine what the humans were like, right? But based on this, this the one-legged guy wins. By based the way, on spoiler. this, this, this tome of knowledge. Okay, but knowing how many <clears throat> bum skips a guy can do is not helpful for nothing. It's not helpful for nothing. No, a thing that no one does, knowing how many of them, someone who's clearly practiced doing that thing that no one does can do. I think it's inspirational because people, you know, Christmas Day, they'll open up their suspiciously shaped, Guinness <laughs> Book of Record shaped present, and be like, it's the Guinness Book of Records, the new one. So I used to get it every year when I was a kid from my parents. And you go through it and be like, oh, bum skipped. What are they? 117. I could probably beat that. You wouldn't know what that probably, was. I can do that. I could do that. Dad, give, give me skippy rope. You'd be doing it wrong. I'd be doing it over the head. I don't think the roundy, the roundy bum skip. Is, <clears throat> that's just not a skip. There might be all, all, all kinds of rules about it as well. You know, not allowed to have any padding underneath, you know, on your cheeks. Right. No springs. That's like performance enhancing drugs. Spring loaded underpants. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm thinking more. Like bouncy pro- pants. I'm thinking more further protection rather than to enhance. You're saying you should do it naked. Bounce. Yes. <laughs> to ensure no. Why not? Oh, God. The amount of bollocks that would get caught in the rope. Where's the fucking marshmallow one? I'm trying to find this story. It's so stupid. It's and it's so not stupid. marshmallow launched 120 meters <laughs> no, caught, caught in guys' enough, mouth. It it's isn't. a different marshmallow oddly story. Enough, for that. It's a different, it's a different story. Oh yeah, this is the guy. This is the, it's the same guy. Right, okay. Okay, so we're watching a man with a catapult yeah. firing marshmallows at another man. Who's catching them in his mouth? He's got a GoPro strapped to his head as well, and he's spitting them out of his mouth into a bowl. I guess they're reusing them. Oh God, they might be Guinness World Records official attempt. Yeah, marshmallows being caught in mouth. There's the guy with the clipboard, so you know it's all like official. This is kind of disgusting. This one. What do you mean? Well, he's like, uh, he's like sticking his. He's like, it's kind of gross. It's okay, there's no waste. They share the marshmallows amongst the crew. Right. Afterwards. No, I'm not so much worried about the waste as more of the... <clears throat> this is truly a pointless thing, though, isn't it? What do you mean? It's completely made up. Most marshmallows caught in mouth in 30 seconds. I mean, you could... It's, uh, Here we go, right. It's pointless. Oh. All right, okay, it's one minute. You've got to do the most in one minute. How many do you think he's going to do? In a minute? Yeah. 117. Same number of bum skips. Okay. 117. Two a second. Is that too many? I reckon it's less. 117. Okay, we'll see. We'll see how it would be insane if it was the same number. That would be wild. Okay. So here we go. Oh, do you like the little spin he does of the bowl? Look at that. That's nice. I reckon he's firing them at least more than one a second. Yeah, look at that, he is. Oh, oh my God, he's doing a lot. <laughs> this is very watchable. Oh, he's missing a few. He is missing a few, though, and he's not catching them all in his mouth. This guy's like a pro. <laughs> this is so stupid. I see, I stupid. Why do you enjoy it so much if it's stupid then? Because it's stupid. I just like to see the guy getting like <laughs> hit in the face with marshmallows. <laughs> Do they count? Do they? Only the ones that go in the mouth count. And he has to drop them. No, it doesn't. It, they just have to go in the mouth. 
He should have to eat them as well, I think. No. Yeah. It's not an eating contest. It's a contest of He should have dexterity. to swallow them. This goes on for far too long. Oh, but, oh It's almost oh, over. Oh, oh. He's done a lot. He's done a lot. That's it. Is he's he he's the last done a one? lot. No. Oh, he does. He does eat the last one. He always eats the last one. That's nice. It's a little ritual. It? That's nice. Look at just them to show the that, floor. Just to show that they're real ones. <laughs> so how many was that? Can we get the number We're going to get the adjudicator. The mark to beat was 47. Okay. David, there were some video issues when I was reviewing, but I yes, was able to see 47. enough. 47. Today you had at least 60. It's a new game. At least 60. Oh, oh, oh. I reckon that's easily beatable. Congratulations. There were some video issues. He wasted so not a lot. Sure the actual number. 60. That's one a second. They weren't. Should we saw the video? Uh, this is terrible, Guinness. They're wasting the money. They're fucking not even doing it properly. Why bother with bringing this c along to come and look like a smug and not know the actual number? It was at least 60. No, that's enough. It's not like we got a book or anything where we keep track of the numbers. They're not even doing the one thing. That is the thing, isn't it? A book keeping track of the numbers. That does sum up the Guinness Book of Records, yeah. But at least 60. <laughs> no. Oh, fuck Guinness World Records. Wow. Wow. We're done? Yeah. Have All you right. enjoyed my PP? I always do, Simon. And I hope to for many years to come. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. <laughs>